just been the most incredible inspiration to me, sitting here with me and visiting with me here in the studio while we plan our wonderful surprise trip to see Count Pedestrian. And I'm going to ship some of my art in advance to Europe. We're going to put on a big show over there. Yes, 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 you were my inspiration, Dad, in recent events. You see, my dear, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I suppose you've noticed all this work I've been doing the past few days while you've been here. Between the wine and the music and the song and our wonderful, wonderful conversations, I've been able to belt out a few pieces based on the Murgatroyd serial killer's work. Yes, 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 yes. My next show is going to be based on the Murgatroyd serial killer. Yes. I've thought about, like, doing this collage of the faces and bodies of his victims and stuff, but I thought that would be considered in bad taste. I mean, the families of the victims might object or something. You know how sensitive and finicky people can be. But the art world might very well like you. Who knows? At any rate, I've just simply taken images of the uh, Murgatroyd serial killer, you know, and done different artistic things with them that were just, oh, God, I was inspired. This is going to be a smash hit. Huh. I just can't wait until we get to Europe and I have held my pieces over there. Jeez. This may be the best show I've ever put on yet. Yes, yes. What, son? does the Murgatroyd Serial Killer. The Murgatroyd Serial Killer by Blatson. Ah, yes. We'll get in the national headlines. I'll be more famous than Andy Warhol at his height. Oh, it's just wonderful, Sharon. It's just wonderful.
son Eric, Count Pedestrian informed me that in a few days we will be having guests arriving here at the castle. He told me Blatz and the artist is flying over with a girlfriend. I want you to be on your best behavior, my son, after all we are guests here you know. And this castle is big enough for all of us. Keep in mind that Blatzen used to live with Count Pedestrian for quite some time at his mansion back in Murgatroyd, so perhaps the two of them are seeking a reconciliation of some kind. I am only asking that you be polite to Blatzen and whoever the young lady may be who is accompanying him during their stay here at the castle. And also Thank in you, international Eric. news today. The artist Blatson of the city of Murgatroyd in the United States has announced that he is about to launch a European art exhibit that will move from one major European city to another, first the exhibit will appear in Paris, France for a few weeks, then Rome, Italy and then on to another great city to be determined at a later time. The exhibit by Blatson is entitled The Murgatroyd Serial Killer and is based upon exactly what the title implies. Whereas some art critics are already disclaiming the exhibit as sensationalistic exploitation, it remains to be seen what the overall response of the art world will be. In other news today, Vince stock has begun climbing once again as sales of the new cologne Sladet 3 continues to soar both in the U.S. as well as abroad. <laughs> well, thank God for satellite television and satellite radio. That sniveling little arrogant, insolent snob with his nose in the air. So-called art it off my work, <laughs> coming to Europe on tour with this little art exhibit entitled The Murgatroyd Serial Killer. So he's going to become even more famous and rich off of my work. I got news for him. Little, hmm. He'd have been easy to dissect while I was still there in Murgatroyd. I do have my own inspiration. <laughs> He's been inspired. Don't let him become one of my works of art then. Where to do it, where to do it, where to do it. I did admire Thomas Harris's work and, of course, the wonderful, wonderful film adaptation that uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins did. Hmm. And that was in Italy, of course. Yes. Huh. When you took care of that inspector. Where, where, where? I really don't want to be a guest here at Count Pedestrian's castle. It would be important to bloody one of these rooms up. Hmm. European landmark. That will be the site of Blatson's demise. Yes, indeed. It'll make international headlines. Of course, they won't know it's me, not immediately, of course, unless I decide to somehow inform them later on. Hmm. At any rate, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Time is running out for you, Blatson. <laughs> Humila's son here at CRZY News and we are now taking you back to the live Senate hearings into the Energy Time Flux device and we understand that Senator Devane will be questioning Dr. Reeb Summer who has been in protective custody since the seizure of the device by federal agencies. And we take you to the hearings now. So let me get this straight for the record here. 
this biotech lab with which you're employed, ma'am, not only manufactures artificial life forms using human DNA, such as Flashy the Paper Doll, and this wooden creature which just tore up and destroyed the city of Murgatroyd. But in addition to that, you also come into possession of a energy time flux device, which we now have seized and have in our possession. Now, I understand that our Dr. Derrickson of Murgatroyd, who has unfortunately suffered from a heart attack and he's recuperating, it, it fell to your lab to take over the energy time flux device, and that Dr. Gatrick is conspicuously absent from these hearings. Is it correct, ma'am, that you've been employed there for a number of years? And is it correct, ma'am, that your name is Dr. Janet Reed Summer? Yes, sir, Senator Devane. That is correct. My name is indeed Dr. Jacqueline Reeve Summer, and I have been employed with the Biotech Lab for the past seven years. I regret to tell you that Dr. Gatrick making an appearance here before this Senate hearing will be impossible, as he is not currently in our present time period. I regret that I am unable to tell you exactly what time period he is in because your Gestapo agents came and seized the time energy flux device which of course now makes it impossible for me to determine where Dr. Gatrick is. I intend to plead the Fifth Amendment on nay and all subsequent questions which you may direct towards me, Senator Devane. Thank you very much. Mr. Gatrick, Mr. Gatrick, uh, we have had a very, very successful week, uh, very, very good. Uh, we manufactured lots of uh, Vincini face cream, and we have sold a lot of Vincini face cream. So, uh, this evening, I would uh, like to invite you to uh, take uh, your young lady in the company, uh, me and uh, Judith. Judith is my uh, friend in Zotto. And uh, she and I are going to the movies tonight, and I would like to uh, have you accompany me with your uh, girl also. Uh, we will go in and see a movie tonight. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Gatrick, uh, come with us. Come with us. I'm buying. I will pay for all of our tickets. Come, come. <laughs> I up with a gun and a maid, I will my life in shade. Now I've, I've gone from the tent to the land. Oh, man, you've pressed and got me down. I'm the brokest man in town. Now I've gone from riches to really, really bad.
Tonight CRZY will present the new exciting blues pianist and vocalist from New Orleans, the artist known as Detard Doe. CRZY will be bringing you an incredible new series, Wicked, Wicked War Tales. You will see the most devastating and catastrophic stories of all-out combat fury. The actual retail price the is... Of battles that shaped all of the many wars in the world. Smarter, faster, happier, better felling, better looking. The answer to the joy you have been seeking all your life is in a little pill called Vinci Lax. Yes, that's right. The new Super Ultra Deluxe Laxative from Vinci Neat Cosmetics. It will blow your innards out. Make slim hair look healthy again. All it takes is a minute from you. And a little kind. Ultra Deluxe Soda Pop from Drifties. That's right. Next time you get a drink at Drifties, don't just make it a double. Make it a double, double, double. And with the new Super Ultra Deluxe Burger, have. Make it a double, and as a result, too. your tender thighs are chafed. Whether you have been riding on a bicycle, a horse, a motorcycle or even driving a taxi cab, Uncle Crud Bucket's Basic Lime Thigh Cream will work wonders on your thighs. Oh yes it will. You thighs will be grateful. Today, the new art exhibit by the American artist Blatson, an exhibit entitled The Murgatroyd Serial Killer, opened to record crowds. Well, I am glad that uh, you arrived here safely. Uh... That's an in, in spite of our past differences, I would very much like for you to be on your best behavior. I have as my guests already Judy Vincini, her son Eric, and his girlfriend Doreen. And I see you have a young lady with you, which I believe you told me on the phone is a former fashion model. Pleased to meet you, Enchante. So, all of us will gather together in the the main dining room for an elegant dinner. Uh, welcome. Welcome to Castle Pedestrian. <laughs> well, 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 I would just simply like to propose a toast to everyone here at the dinner. Uh, first of all, to our, our gracious host, Count Pedestrian the Third. Dear Castle here is absolutely magnificent, Count. It dwarfs that mansion that you had me living in back in Murgatroyd before you changed your mind and, shall we say, evicted me. And my goodness, I had absolutely no idea, Sharon, that you and Judy and Cindy already knew each other. I had no idea the two of you were acquainted. <laughs> Such an interesting little mix here. And you, Eric... The Murgatroyd serial killer, you should be very grateful for my new art exhibit based on you. It's elevating you to historic and legendary stature. <clears throat> now you won't just be some common serial killer. Why, you'll be worldwide famous. You should thank me for my glory exhibit. It's going to immortalize your work of which I've always been an admirer, by the way, as sordid and messy and grisly and grim as it is. Anyway, I propose a toast to our host, Count Pedestrian, so let us all raise our glasses and clink.
sniveling little wimp wannabe artist. My girlfriend here, Doreen, was not aware of my other career until you had to blurt your mouth out. And the bitch there in the red gloves, well, that's Sharon Cielo who kidnapped my mom. I'm afraid this little dinner may not turn out as pleasant for the two of you as you two may have expected. <laughs> you see now, Blatson, you have to deal with me personally. And, dear Sharon, you have to deal with my mom. And my dear mom very definitely has a score to settle. Only out of respect for Count Pedestrian do I spare you right now, Blatson. I'd just as soon chop you to pieces right now with this huge butcher knife. But, <laughs> seeing as how I don't see the two of you escaping me anytime soon, Mom, you can deal with your former kidnapper, Sharon. Well, I take care of Blatson. But, in the interest of polite society and civilization and respect for Count Pedestrian, I suggest we all finish our dinner and our wine first. Then, Blaston, I'll give you a head start. This castle has many, many, many rooms, but I doubt you can run and hide from me forever. It's a big place, but I know every nook and cranny in it. And Sharon, somehow I don't see you out running my mom either, so this could turn into a very interesting cat and mouse kind of game. As I say, as soon as the two of you are finished for dinner, I'll give you a head start. Oh, 30, 45 seconds at the very least. <laughs> Let us remain civilized. There are rules to the game. It's very, very simple, actually. Blatson, you have fallen out of my favor, bandying my name about in such scandalous fashion back in Murgatroyd. I'm afraid you'll receive no protection from me. You're on your own. Against Eric. Blatson, you're a poseur. I want to be. Eric, I only ask that you not bloody up my castle. Take Blatson somewhere else if you don't mind. And Judy, do what you will with your former kidnapper, Sharon. Somehow I do not see killing as a sport in which you would take pleasure. A good beating, perhaps, or as there are many secret rooms here in the castle... You have my blessing and permission to hold Sharon as a prisoner here for whatever amount of time you please, just as she held you for a time. Count Pedestrian, you are the very embodiment of evil. And this Murgatroyd serial killer here. Eric, I thought you were dead. I saw you get shot at that televised wedding and it was announced that you were dead. <laughs> my dear Sharon. The rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Huh. But if the world thinks I'm dead, who am I to argue? Beaucoup de monde. My dear sweet mom here, whom you held hostage, got Dr. Getrick to bring me back to life. Deal with it, Sharon, while my mom deals with you. <laughs> Count pedestrian, it will indeed be my pleasure to put Sharon through what she put me through. Payback is a bitch with a capital B, only this time it is a capital V for Vincini. He he ha ha he he ha ha ha. I remember seeing a documentary on television about this great castle. As I recall, there is a dungeon down below left over from the Middle Ages. Complete with shackles and chains on the walls. I think that will be a most appropriate holding place for Sharon C. Well, well, first of all... The two of you are way out of your league, Blatson, Sharon. But you're not part of the superior dominating race. It's just Judy and I, we are the upper one percenters. Both of you are quite disposable. You'll, you'll never even be able to aspire to have achieved. My father, Count Pedestrian II, collaborated with the Nazis because he recognized that he was superior. He recognized the superiority of our bloodline. That is why this great castle is adorned with fabulous art from all over Europe. 
In the interest of fairness, of course, I will give the two of you a head start, but I'm afraid, Blatz, and then <laughs> you are quite definitely at Eric's mercy, and Sharon, I'm afraid you are at the mercy of uh, Judy Vincini. So let us all finish off this last bottle of wine, and, and then let the games begin. You've got to go get help. We can't be stuck here on the highway in the middle of nowhere. Why didn't you charge your cell phone up before we took off? Jesus Christ. Look, there's a house right over there. Leave the dog here with me. I don't want to be stuck in the car here all by myself. I mean, maybe I can walk with the dog behind you or something. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your hospitality, Uncle Frank. Yes, my boyfriend here didn't bother to charge up his cell phone before we took off on the road and he didn't fix the radiator either. Thank you for letting us come in out of the rain and for letting our dog come in also. We really appreciate your yes, help. Yes, Uncle Frank. I appreciate you letting us come in and dry off. And yes, she's right. Damn it. Chris is always right. I should have charged up my cell phone. Should have got the radiator fixed before we took off. Here I am stranded four miles from Murgatroyd. Uh, yes, this is what they call flat town. I don't know. I heard nothing but weird tales about Murgatroyd, everything from walking paper dolls to serial killers, but thank you for letting us dry off, and maybe we can get my radiator fixed before dark. Thank you, Uncle Frank. Well, it's heavy as it's raining and all. I don't think we can work on that radiator till the rain quits. You all just as well as to sit there by the fireplace and dry off, and a little dog there can dry off, too. I'll go in there and Get the dog and part of the pork chop I get left over in the ice box. I'm keeping my triple, triple, triple for my late night snack. But to y'all, just have a seat there in front of the fireplace. I'll be right back with that pork chop for the dog. This I is ACRZY News Bulletin. The body of the Murgatroyd serial killer, Eric Niedermeyer is missing from the medical examiner's office. Speculations range along the lines of angry family members of one of the many slain victims having stolen their body for revenge purposes to the possibility of macabre trophy hunters having stolen the body. Lieutenant Skitters announced that no measures to recover the body or identify the ghoulish culprits will be taken. He went on to explain, in a press conference earlier today, that he felt that Murgatroyd had already suffered enough grief with the more than 22 victims in the past four years and that the faster the whole thing can be closed, the faster the healing process for Murgatroyd can move forward. In other news today, Vince Neistock again rallied with the huge box office success of the new hit movie Zombie War Apocalypse at the Vince Ne Triple Flex Theatres. If this rain ever quits, we'll, we'll go out there and I'll, I'll fix y'all's radiator. I heard a noise out back. Y'all just sit still there by the fireplace. I reckon I'm going to grab my shotgun and go out back and check things out. You'd be amazed at the weird crap I've seen slithering and wandering around in the woods. It's a lot of that old chemicals from the Vincini Cosmetic place. They dump them in the creek there and it rolls and washes on down there by that biotech lab. And I've seen some weird stuff out there before. Wouldn't nobody believe me. Thought about calling in on some of these call in radio talk shows and tell them about it, but they think I'm crazy. Hell, half the flat town of Murgatroyd probably already sent some crazy. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna go out here and check that noise out. Uh, yeah, I'll just sit still there. I've got my shotgun. Everything's gonna be alright. It'd be alright. Thank you. So here we are stranded in the middle of nowhere at some man's house who is a complete stranger and he's gone off in the woods with a shotgun chasing after some strange noise that he just heard. Honey, I think we need to get out of here at once. Let's just go back to the car, I don't care if it is raining, we can sit in the car until someone stops and helps us get the car running. I just do not feel safe here. I just don't feel safe at all, honey.
Waitress. Waitress. Get your skinny ass over here. Don't you know who we are? How the hell do you expect a tip for service like this? My damn salad tasted like it was at least a week old and there's not enough ice in this glass of iced tea to even get it cold. Oh, and the vegetables were all way too salty and my husband the mayor here has high blood pressure. Are you idiots here trying to kill the poor man? This may be the last time we ever eat here, and believe me, if we stop coming, so will the rest of Murgatroyd. And my husband's poor excuse of a steak was the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life. If you can call that a steak, I wouldn't feed that thing to my dog. Get it together before I call Gordon Ramsay up on the phone and send him down here to chew you fools out. You know my husband and I are personal friends with a man. No, of course you idiots wouldn't know that, this is a dump, not a high class restaurant. What was I thinking? What was damn I it, thinking? Martha, damn it, Martha, now you know why I never take you anywhere. You just complain, complain, complain. Hell, if I knew you was just going to complain all night, we could have stayed home and let the maid fix something, for God's sakes. I'm dropping 50 bucks or more here in this restaurant, and all you're doing is complaining. It won't be the vegetables that cause me to have a heart attack. It'll be listening if you complain. You complain since the day we're married. If I don't have enough stuff at work driving me crazy, causing me to almost have a heart attack, I mean, between serial killers and people being shot at weddings and this damn paper doll walking around and all this time travel mess, there's constantly some kind of mess going on, don't you realize that? And there's people breathing down my neck, putting me under pressure all the time. Last thing I need is my wife going out to dinner and complaining, complaining, complaining. Every time you turn around and yell, we're out complaining constantly. I don't know what's wrong with you, Martha. This is the last time I'll ever take you out to dinner. Thanks for meeting me here at Drifties and thanks for the coffee. So, girlfriend, have I got some stuff to tell you, oh boy do I first of all, some guy inhale too much of the slight E2 cologne in the bottling line and he like literally collapsed, I just passed out and fell down on the floor. And everyone is like, gee whiz. What on earth do they put in that stuff anyway? I mean my god remember a few years ago when Judy Vincini was putting that low level acid in the face cream? I mean my god they had televised Senate hearings about that stuff. So anyway, I quit working at Vincini Cosmetics last week but I managed to get on over at the paper doll factory. Man that Japanese guy that runs the place is something else. I got on as a desk girl in his outer office and I ended up bringing him coffee the other day inside his office and my god he was decked out in a samurai suit and practicing with a samurai sword, scared the hell out of me. But oh my god does he worship his daughter. Oh boy does he. He has pictures of her all over his office and all over the paper doll factory too. I swear to God, girl, they are on every wall hey all girls. over the place. Hey Sandra, hey Margie, here's you both a triple 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 drifty sausage biscuit and another cup of Vincini Ultra Deluxe Triple Star Gourmet Coffee. Enjoy your breakfast here at Drifty.
a honeymoon vacation. As you know, Imogene and I were away in Paris, France on our honeymoon, but it's great to be back here in Murgatroyd and back here tonight hosting Dark and Deep, which, as you know, is simulcast both here on uh, television at CRZY as well as on a radio station, so you can listen to it on the radio and call in, or you can call in while watching it on TV, and of course all of you viewers and callers and listeners already know that uh, your phone call is aired live right here on Last Tomac Dark and Deep show, as well as on the the radio show. So, I guess we're ready to start the show. It is open mic. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with details about our honeymoon in Paris. I'll do a special Les Tomac show about that. Uh, but you're free to call in again and talk about any relevant news topic, any local event, any major event, anything. Just call in. Uh, we're ready to take your calls. And it looks like we have a caller right now on line one. Go ahead, caller. Obviously, I wish to remain anonymous during this call, but I am one of the thousands of women nationwide who had her face scarred by that Vincini face cream a few years ago. How in the hell Judy Vincini got away with putting that low-level acid in the face cream is beyond me. And that class action lawsuit. Well, I was part of that and I will not disclose the small settlement that I received but I will tell you that it was downright insulting. It won't even come close to touching the pain and suffering I endured the past several years. I have been to four different dermatologists and they all tell me that there is nothing they can do, that I will just have to live with it. Well, I wonder how Judy Vincini can live with herself knowing what she did. You would have thought those televised Senate hearings would have done her in, but she ended up getting romantically involved with Senator Quint and that relationship somehow protected her I guess. Then he got shot, of course, a tragedy, to be sure but she's still just waltzing around like nothing ever happened. And then it turned out her out of wedlock son that she wouldn't claim and didn't even raise turned out to be the Murgatroyd serial killer. My God, what a madhouse. I think Murgatroyd itself has gone insane. It's all just nuts, just absolutely nuts. That's all I have to say for now. Thanks for taking my call and having me on here. Goodbye for now. Dear Les, thank you for taking my call. My name is Bradson and I'm going to call it straight as I see. I study history and anthropology especially Native American Indian history and I would like to bring something up that I ran across in my research. As you know, the Tewakanani Indian tribe fled this area nearly 400 years ago when the nearby religious fanatics of Flat Town were going after them to try to destroy them. Anyway, I ran across where the shaman, the high priest, the medicine man, what have you, of the Tewakanani Indians actually placed a curse, yes that's right, a curse, upon this whole and war area. So to be honest with you, I think all of the bad stuff, the living paper doll flashy, that wooden creature, Murgatroyd burning to the ground and having to be rebuilt, even the Murgatroyd serial killer and all his victims, I think all of that is a result of the curse that was placed upon Murgatroyd by that Indian shaman. Now that's my theory. So I've said what I have to say, Les, peace out. Peace out everybody, later. Murgatroyd. 
Detroit serial killer. Marcus Troy serial killer. My my name is Eric. 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 <sighs> of Eric. Oh Eric. Did the TV wake you up? Here, I cooked up a pizza while you were asleep. Wake up and enjoy. Here's some Vinci Pop to wash it down with. And hey, I got you some of those Vinci Nemental Alert pills to help you get your memory back. Here, take on now Eric, take one now. I got another Vinci Pop in the fridge too if you want another one in a few minutes. Files presented here were discovered in the apartment of Apron Head after his suicide through self-immolation as he burned down the paper dough factory. The identities of the mental patients remain unknown, but paperwork which accompanied the cassettes indicated that they were former patients of Dr. Flipshire in Flat Town and that both women had committed suicide and each had no known relatives. Dr. Flipshire agreed upon the release of these audio files to the public and we present them here now in their raw, graphic mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. I'm as ready as a freak. Uh, Dr. Flipshire, I'm going to tell you about what happened to me. Uh, it happened this last time without getting a piece of money if I don't get revenge. I'm as ready as a freak. Uh, I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. When I saw when I read the truck, I was thinking that my doctor and I finally tried to get suicide, but I don't believe that he is. I'm just trying to stand for the railroad. Let's take it, y'all. I don't even think I can conduct my life according to what society deems acceptable, and I do. I'm starting to get this evil little urge. Vincini, an audio presentation of Vincini Media Enterprises. I was born in the early 1960s to a very successful and loving father, Vincent Vincini, who was very kind but also very controlling. I was spoiled and spared no luxury, as they say, but I was also groomed to run his cosmetics empire from a very early age. It was understood that I would one day be in charge of Vincini Cosmetics. Here's an excerpt from my early childhood of a TV appearance my dad made on the Les Tomac show, and of course he brought me along with She like cut to put a little bit of her Play-Doh into the jar of Vincini face a cream. And sometime uh, she like cut to put a little bit of sand, you know. Off into the jar of Vincini face a crema, uh, you know. She always liked to add something to the face. In my late teens, I became involved with a young man who belonged to a motorcycle gang, much to the disapproval of my powerful and controlling father. I became pregnant, but when the two boys were born they were quickly given up for adoption and I never got an opportunity to visit or raise them, as I was immediately, when I turned 18, thrust into the family cosmetic business. 
Here's another sound clip from your another appearance on the Les Tomac show. Only this time I am all grown up and working at Dad's Cosmetic Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are viewers at home. We welcome uh, Judy Vincini here. She is the uh, owner and CEO of the Vincini Cosmetics Corporation right here in Murgatroyd. Of course, it's national in its influence and its distribution. It's a major cosmetic company, and you may recall 10 years ago when Judy was still just a little girl, I had her father, uh, Vincent Vincini, he's the founder of the company, here on my show. And today, all grown up and in charge of the company, we have Judy Vincini. So, Judy, uh, tell us, how did this new uh, Elastiflux ingredient in the Ultra Deluxe uh, Triple Star Face Cream uh, come into being? Uh, what What is uh, Elastiflux? Well, as I am sure you recall, Les, my beloved father, Vincent Vincini was on your show back in 1969, and he joked about how I would put Play-Doh in jars of Vincini face cream. Well, when I grew up and took over the company, I got to thinking hey skin is kind of like potty ordo and if our brilliant scientists have Vincini could come up with an ingredient that would gently pull and tug at your skin, I mean, like... Well, that would do wonders for any woman's complexion and would eliminate wrinkles and keep your face fresh and young looking and glowing. So I talked to some of our research team and the Vincini lab exists as a new ingredient. Hi, Eric. I am so glad you are back. Where on earth have you been? Anyway, I cooked us a late night pizza snack. It's there on the coffee table. I couldn't find the pizza cutter, but there's a knife there you can cut it with. While you are doing that, I am going to go take a quick shower. Then I will sit down with you and have some pizza and another Vinci pop. Don't worry. I won't be in the shower very long. I'll Camilla be at Sun in the here at CRZY News, and we have with us as our guest today Dr. Flipsherer of Flat Town, who will be discussing what he calls the psychological breakdown of society in Murgatroyd in particular. Welcome to the show, yeah, Dr. Flipsherer. Thank you, there, uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here again. Yeah, this is Dr. Flipsherer from down and most of your viewers I'm sure recall when I was on here a uh, year and a half, two years ago, whenever uh Aspring had burned down the paper doll factory and then committed suicide and I was commenting then on uh, the mental state of Aspring had well today I'm gonna comment on the mental state of Merck Detroit. I think there's gonna be more and more of this this type of thing that y'all have seen here. If you recall after uh, Apron had burned down the paper doll factory and killed himself, all of a sudden then, the serial killer began to strike. Well, of course, the serial killer turned out to be uh, Apron Head's brother, as we now know, and uh, was slain at the wedding of Les Pomack and Imogene Sadowski, and now somebody has stolen the body of the Murgatroyd serial killer. I predict there's going to be copycat killers and more, more chaos because I think what we're witnessing is the the mental breakdown of society. I'm going to call it the psychological breakdown of of Murgatroyd. That's what we're all we're all witnessing, and uh, things are going to continue. I believe to get worse Allow before they get Doctor Flipsher, to correct one of your statements. As a reporter here at CRZY who followed the Murgatroyd serial killer's rampage from its very beginning some four years ago, I would like to clarify that the Murgatroyd serial killer had already claimed many victims before Apronhead did his dirty deeds. So let's be clear about that. Now it can be argued, perhaps, that the serial killer, 
Eric Niedermeyer, escalated his slayings after the suicide death of his brother Apron Head, but in the interests of accuracy, let's be clear about the facts here, Dr. Flipshear. Bulletin alert, thank you. News bulletin alert. This is Ronson Kilroy at CRZY News. We interrupt this program to bring you the following breaking news. The body of a young woman has been discovered behind the Super Deluxe Grocery Store tonight. Surveillance footage from the store cameras aimed at the back alley captured the event and Lt. Skitters had this to say about what the surveillance footage reveals the, about uh, the crime. The deceased victim uh, discovered here is Lt. Skitters with the Murgatroyd Homicide Division. I'm in charge of the serial killer case. This appears to be a copycat killer, seeing as how I saw the personally identified the Murgatroyd serial killer's death at the wedding of Les Tomac and Imogene Sikowski. I will say this, the surveillance camera and the perpetrator appears to be the same height, weight, and appearance of uh, Eric Niedermeyer. And if I did not know that he was dead, I would say that it was the same individual. The surveillance camera also, sadly, recorded the dismemberment of Flashy the Paper Doll by this killer and then a young, as yet unidentified skateboarder, whom we believe to be Timothy Lawrenson, uh, came along and uh, taped Flashy back together and put her in a grocery cart and took off with her. So he left the scene of the crime, this young skateboarder, and he took the other victim, Flashy the paper doll, with him. We do not know uh, where he took her uh, or where this young skateboarder is, but we want to question him further, obviously, as quickly as possible for additional information on anything he saw or heard or additional uh, description and information he can give us on the, uh, the perpetrator on, the, on this new apparent uh, copycat killer. And this was uh, Lieutenant Skinner. That's all I have to say uh, at this moment. the gorgeous striptease queens in action as they display their charms. Is every man's dream girl. Their sexy seconds to every minute as the dancers strip to please. Is every man's dream girl. See the gorgeous striptease queens in action as they display their charm. See the daring display of torso. Detroit's original award-winning late 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 movie right here on CRZY see the best and rare and obscure cult motion pictures right here on the late 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 movie tonight's classic feature film is night of unspeakable horror directed by Anastas Bulamai and starring Valeria Kolcherson and princely Forestman so sit back Grab your late night snacks and get ready for frightening late night entertainment from your station of stations, CRZY of Murgatroyd City.
Hawaii Television presents a special documentary tribute to the late Senator Randerson Quint, the life of Senator Randerson Quint. The shooting took place on the parking lot of the Prime Deluxe Ultra Hotel. Senator Quint had stepped out of his limousine. Those of you from Murgatroyd City in lady. Flat Town uh, when the shot may recall out. some of the highlights of the late Senator Quint's career. The chairman of the House he was in Senate Committee in the opening of the which former investigated the Vincini Cosmetics Corporation. And he later became the love interest of Judy Vincini. Breaking news from the Murgatroyd City Police Department where Lt. Skitters is about to hold a press conference about the arrest of the alleged assassin yes, uh, the late Senator Quinn. And we take you now suspect, to the press conference. Uh, with evidence directly connects this gentleman to the assassination of Senator Quint. He is directly connected to the high-powered uh, telepathic route. Of Senator Quinn. The heart of my fellow citizens. You can never be replaced. I enjoyed a close personal relationship with the Senator, and all of you were touched by his charm and his grace. May his memory and influence live on in all of us. Of Murgatroyd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with the wildly talented Rich Vernado of Crazy Insane Radio, the series. All right, we're going to be interviewing him for just a short time to see what he has to say about his spinoff. So, I hear you have a spinoff series. How will it be different from Crazy Insane Radio? Well, first of all, thank you for, for asking, and I'm glad that you enjoyed my original series, Crazy Insane Radio. This new series, which is called Murgatroyd After Dark, the Murgatroyd Chronicles, has a slower pace, greater focus, uh, and greater attention to uh, a different kind of detail in terms of uh, more suspense. It's going to be more of creating a mood. And uh, so basically I'm just kind of changing things up slightly in that regard. I'm going to do a slower, more in-depth uh, approach, more of a, a character-driven approach on this one. Uh, you'll like it because it will be so different from the other one, which, of course, uh, I hope you like and continue to like the other one as well. As far as it being character-driven, oh, that's what one of the main things about the new series is going to be and one of the main ways in which it's going to differ from the other one. The first one, Crazy Insane Radio, is plot-driven and surprise event-driven. On this one, it's going to be more slow development of people. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, will many of our favorite and main characters from Crazy Insane Radio cross over at any point? Yes, as a matter of fact, I will occasionally have crossovers of the main major characters from the original series briefly into this new series, but the episode will not necessarily center on them. Think of this as being done from the point of view of the average person who lives in Murgatroyd who happens to be outside and sees Flashy the paper doll walking down the sidewalk or picks up their paper and reads about the serial killer but then goes and fixes dinner and life goes on for them. I see, I see. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the Crazy Insane, or the uh, the new one that you're doing? Oh, yes. One of the things is I'm going to be attempting uh, to introduce a whole different set of characters, as I was talking about, and these characters are not part of the main action in the other series, although they see it here and might be impacted by some of it. 
this would be more along the lines of, say, Imogene's secretary at the TV station, Mayor Peransky's chauffeur, the janitor who cleaned Celeste Tomac's office, the waitress who hands Senator Devane his steak. This series is going to focus on uh, not the movers and shakers of Murgatroyd as the other one does, but the average citizen. But the setting, Murgatroyd, is the same. Some of the storylines will slightly intersect and interconnect. It's a challenge I've created for myself. Um, yes, I'm very excited. Uh, it is trying to show how the average citizens react to the madness of Murgatroyd, whether it's corrupt senators and mayors, walking, talking paper dolls, serial killers, whatever. You see, even the original is a lot deeper than it appears on the surface. Many of the episodes are veiled social commentary on current events. So in a sense, these everyday characters in the new series represent you and I dealing with what's going on in today's world. Well, that is indeed different, but I can tell you right now that I'm excited, and I'm sure all of the followers right now are incredibly excited. Is there anything else? Yeah, I would just like to wrap up this interview by saying that, yes, it should be fun. Uh, it allows me to branch out new and different directions creatively. And I want to urge anyone who's already watching Crazy Insane Radio on my YouTube channel to go ahead and start watching this one. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's Rich Bernardo on YouTube. And you can look it up, Google it easily, go inside YouTube and search for Crazy Insane Radio, go inside YouTube and search for Murgatroyd After Dark, the Murgatroyd Chronicles. Well, I love it already, and I know that all of your fans are going to love it, and I look forward to more and more and more of it. And, you know, I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You know, I, it, it was great to have you here, and I, I loved learning about the new series. Well, I definitely appreciate being a guest, and thank you very much for interviewing me.